Hey guys, so um, in the last video I showed you how to create this uh, toolbar here uh, where we basically just have some simple actions, uh, quit, and then this action which takes the place of clicking this button. Um, in this video we're going to do something a little bit more advanced. Um, first, just to make the UI a little bit cleaner, um, I'm going to show you how to create a tab, a tab widget. So similar to what you'll see in Sublime Text here where you have two tabs, uh, what I plan on doing is creating a tab um, to hold everything we've worked on so far. And then inside of the second tab, um, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, get open file dialog, or get open file name uh, file dialog that PyQt provides where you can uh, basically open up a window um, and then navigate through your file manager and select a file. Um, and then we're going to read that file into a uh, Q text edit widget, which is simply um, something like what you would see in Sublime Text here, where you can read text. Uh, so we're going to open up a file and read it all into that uh, Q text edit widget. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so I'll collapse some of these here just to make it easier to read. Um, let's see. Uh, so <clears throat> before we even create the uh, the tab widget itself, uh, we're going to want to create uh, a layout to hold the uh, tab widget. Um, so that's going to be the same idea as this uh, QV box layout here. Uh, we can create a new variable called uh, tab layout. Call it. Um, and QV box layout itself. And then so this one uh, now is actually going to be the parent for all of the other items. Or it's going to be at the root of the tree of parents for all the other items. So we can actually remove um, the self here. But well, first of all, um, let's see. So. Uh, We'll just go ahead and create the uh, tabs widget um, first. And so that's going to be a Q tab widget. And no parent for that because that's going to be, um, parent for that is simply going to be the, uh, the tab layout. And uh, in my prior videos, I didn't explain it, but when you add a widget to a layout, <clears throat> by default, that will set the parent of the widget to be that layout. So you can't have any widgets being pushed into layouts that already have parents. Um, it'll just give you an error when you're when you're trying to uh, run the code. Um, so we have the tab widget, uh, and let's add the tab widget to the tab layout. So add widget by tabs, um, and. And what we have to do here is because we're getting rid of the um, the availability of this uh, the parent to be uh, held inside of um, the main layout, uh, we're going to have to. Oh, looks like this is frozen. Let's see. Give it a second. Um, I'm going to pause this and then come back when this is not frozen. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. So, got this thing working again. It actually crashed, which is uh, surprising. I don't think we've ever had that happen with Sublime Text. Um, so, what we're doing, we have to add the uh, tab layout. We have to add the tab widget to the tab layout. Um, and now we have main layout, QV box layout. So, we have to. We actually have to create a new widget, a new Q widget, which is going to act as the parent for the uh, the main layout. And the reason we have to do that is because if you want to add um, items to a uh, tab widget, the only thing you can actually add to a tab widget is a widget itself. So we're not going to be able to just push our <coughs> main layout into the uh, into the tab widget as a single tab. We have to create a widget to act as the parent of the main layout. Um, which we can then push into the tab widget. So, uh, for the first tab here, we'll just call it basic stuff. Basic stuff parent. And this is just going to be 
Q widget initialized with really nothing. Um, and then we can use that as the parent for the main layout. Um, and then what that allows us to do is, like I was saying, we can do my tabs dot add tab um, basic stuff parent, and then this should include everything that's inside of this main layout because the main layout's parent is actually the basic stuff parent. Um, then we have to provide a name for this tab so we can call it basic stuff, and we can run this here and just see if this works. <coughs> And it should basically just be a single tab with everything we used to have, yeah. Okay, and then so we can see um, we're going to actually need to add some spacing above our uh, where we insert the, um, the tab widget. And if you recall, uh, it's fairly easy to do that. All we have to do is tab layout dot add spacing, uh, do 25 pixels. We'll try this again. Okay, yeah, so now um, everything's set up perfectly. We have our uh, everything we worked on in the prior three videos in this first tab, just labeled basic stuff. can push this. This still works. This is an action works, but we already clicked it, so you can't see it. And then we'll quit out of that. I'll just open that back up so we can look at it. Um, and now what we want to do is add in um, our second tab with our more advanced stuff, which I explained earlier is going to be um, a button to allow us to open up a file and then all the contents of that file are going to be dropped into a, uh, a Qtext text edit widget, which is similar to what you'll see here in Sublime Text, just allows you to view the text. Um, so we'll go down below all this other stuff. Um, you can even put it all the way at the bottom here inside of uh, init UI. Um, <clears throat> and same as what we did for the basic stuff, we're going to have to create a widget. Uh, to act as the parent for the stuff we're going to create now. So we can call it harder stuff parent. Um, just going to be, uh, what is it, just a Q widget. Um, harder stuff layout. And then we'll just do another VBox layout because we're only going to have a button and a, uh, a text editor below that. And then the parent for that actually has to be harder stuff parent. And then before we even add the stuff in, we can add this, uh, what we have <coughs> so far to our tab widget. Uh, passing the parent widget as the parameter. And then we'll do advanced, if I can spell that correctly. And we'll run this. And we should have two tabs now. Yep. So we got our basic stuff and then advanced. And so what we're going to want to do is add uh, just a Q push button here and then our text editor below that where we're going to be able to show the uh, contents of a, of a file. Okay, let me just make a delimiter here to make this easier to see. So this is all the stuff here for the second tab. Okay, um, so <clears throat> create a new variable, we can call it get file button, it's going to be another Q push button, um, get, we want to connect that in the same fashion as we did previously, uh, connect to a function, member function here, um, just name it get file. Um, and then we can actually, I'll create that after I finish uh, creating the rest of this tab. Um, well, first off, we can add that to the layout here. Add widget, get file button. Okay. Now we can create the, um, the text editor. So uh, we want to be able to make it uh, accessible in other functions in, the, in, the, in this class here, in this main window class. Uh, namely so that we can um, actually, once we've opened the file, we can send the text into it. Um, we wouldn't be able to do that if it was just a local variable like all the rest of these uh, widgets we've been creating are. So <clears throat> let's make it self.fileEditor equals uh, QTextEdit. 
And PyQt provides um, QtextEdit. edit. Uh, another similar widget is called QlineEdit, which is actually the exact same thing as QtextEdit, edit, but it only allows you to uh, show a single line at a time. Uh, whereas this will be however many lines you want. Um, both of them allow you to set text, and then the user is able to, by default, change the text that they're. Um, but in our case, it's not going to be changing anything on the file because we're not saving to the file. Uh, and so let's add this to the layout. Add widgets, uh, harder stuff, uh, self.file editor is what we want to add. We don't want to add the layout itself. Um, and before we can test this, we actually have to create uh, this get file function uh, so we don't get any complaints there. Uh, dev get file. Just pass the instance as the parameter. Um, for now, we could just print uh, getting file or something. So let's see now. Fingers crossed we should have. Oh, yep. It looks like it's working, but we forgot to set the, uh, the actual label on that button. So we can just call it open uh, file. Let's test that out. Okay. Yep. And you can see it's printing out the terminal, so we know it's calling the, uh, the get file function here. So let's get rid of that. And um, this is how we're going to use. So, well, first off, the uh, to open up a file, we're going to use q file dialog dot get open file name, and we pass the instance as the parameter to that. And what this is going to do is return uh, the file name that the user has selected. So we can just create a local variable called file name and set it equal to that the return value from that function and then for now we'll just print that file name. And we'll try this out. Open a file. There we go. See, so uh, by default I guess it's opening in this uh, the same location as where <coughs> the source code is located. So we'll just double click the source code um, and you can see here uh, we've got the full path to the file name. So we'll continue on ahead and uh, open that file up so we can say text is equal to open f name and read dot read. Um, and then all we have to do to set the file or the contents of the file or drop those into the uh, text editor is self dot file editor which is what we named our Q text edit widget. Self.file editor dot set text. So similar to the uh, the Q label function. Set text equal to text. And let's see, so this should I'll just test it out again with the uh, <coughs> the source code for our actual thing so we can get like some inception action. Okay, cool. <coughs> so as you can see here, we were able to open up the file, and it's now showing us the source code for uh, the actual project we've been working on. And so that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.